How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how you can use CSS to apply graphical effects to your images. Okay, so right here we have a photo of me from about two years ago. I'm sitting in my old gaming chair wearing my sunglasses. Uh, thankfully, since then I've got a new chair which is a lot more ergonomic and comfortable. But aside from that, nothing else much has really changed. But regardless, we're going to be applying some alterations to this image using only CSS. And this is done using a property called filter. Now, the filter property has been around for quite some time now, but I think it's still one of the lesser known CSS properties because typically any images that are going to appear on your website or you're going to be including would typically be uh, edited before they get put on the website or at least at the same time, right? So the graphic designer or somebody else would give you your photos in, for example, grayscale, or they might be blurred and things like that. Those effects will be done on the image file itself, as opposed to those alterations being done in the code. So what CSS filter lets you do is it lets you apply those changes in the code instead of, of course, the typical way on the file. Hope that makes sense, okay? Um, we're gonna be going inside VS Code right here and I'm targeting the class of decode, which is of course just the image tag, right? And let's apply our first CSS filter. There are many to choose from. I'm gonna be covering uh, quite a few of them. So let's say filter and set this to be blur and let's say five pixels. So basically the way this works is you provide the function name or the filter name, then inside brackets, you provide a value and it's typically like the intensity or the amount of this filter. So I'll save this now, go back in the browser, refresh and we get a five pixel blur on that image, okay? Now, I might just stick with the dev tools for the remainder of this video because we're gonna be able to see the changes in real time, okay? Also worth pointing out, if you didn't know, you can, once you select your element and you're in the styles section, if you click on a CSS property that's like this one with a value in it, okay, and you highlight the value or you select the value, you can actually scroll with your mouse, with the scroll bar, to increase or decrease that value. And this here works on a lot of values in CSS. So, comes in handy quite a bit not related to filter specifically, but I wanted to mention it if you weren't aware. Just keep that in mind, right? Okay, so back to the filters. We've seen blur, okay? Let's have a look at another filter called brightness, okay? Let's say brightness, and we'll just use 0.5. So it ranges from zero, okay, and up to one, but you can actually go past that one. So, of course, right now, 0.5 just means, you know, 50% brightness. I can increase it by scrolling, 1.5, and there we go. Keep going, and it gets brighter and brighter. So, yeah, like I said, a lot of these properties, not all of them, but a lot of them, uh, you can exceed that amount, and it's actually going to make that change to the image, okay? So, you've also got uh, things like contrast. Let's say contrast right here, and we'll say 200%. As you can see now, the darker parts of the image are a lot deeper, okay? And everything uh, looks a little bit more saturated and more prominent, okay? Excuse my knowledge of graphic design and, and the way colors work and so on. Um, but yeah, so you've got contrast as well if you want to use that one. You've also got things like grayscale. I think this one here is particularly uh, one of the more useful ones, especially for, uh, you know, uh, small business websites that might have a, uh, you know, a massive, you know, grayscale background to expose the vibrant colors of their products or whatever it might be. So you can say, for example, a 50% grayscale, okay, not much colors in the image anymore, right? Um, if you go to 100%, you're going to get a fully black and white image, as you can see right there, okay? You've also got things like Hue Rotate. I think this one here is probably going to be one of the lesser used ones. I'm not too sure when you'd want to rotate the hue of your images. Uh, but look, it's, it's there if you want to use it. Um, one cool thing I want to show you with this one though, 
is if you press enter right here, in Chrome DevTools, you've got this little control. And if I click it, it pops up with this, yeah, just a bigger version of that control. So you can actually drag it around and it applies the radius uh, or the degrees update. So this is quite cool. I learned about this tonight when I was making this video. Um, and yeah, I thought it was cool. Um, it should work for uh, any other degree value in your CSS. Uh, think about things like, I believe, transform you can do degree or rotate, rotate, right? Yeah, just keep that in mind as well. It's quite cool. Um, again, back to the filters. <laughs> You've also got things like opacity. We can say 25% as an example. Now, I don't know why you'd want to uh, change the opacity of you know, the image using filter and not just the standard opacity CSS property. Maybe if your image is inside some sort of container, you may choose to set the opacity here and not in the normal CSS property. I don't know, but again, this one here probably going to be one of the lesser used uh, filters. Okay. You've also got saturate. I think this one is going to be up there with uh, blur and grayscale as being, you know, quite commonly used. You can say, for example, a 30% saturation to, uh, you know, give it more of a grayscale or you can exceed 100 to make it a lot more vibrant. You can see there, obviously, the colors are more exposed. Um, you can go quite far with this. So maybe you've been given an image by the designer or something and then it's not exactly, uh, you know, as vibrant as they'd like, you can change it using CSS. I think, look, typically you're probably going to get them to change it, but you see the point. You can do this stuff with CSS if you really need to. Now, before moving on to the next one, I want to say that you can animate these properties. I'll show you how to do that uh, towards the end of the video, but I think animations and transitions is where this stuff might be more useful uh, than you think, okay? You've also got sepia. Uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly, but you can say, for example, 100% to give you that sepia effect. I'm not sure exactly how I can describe it further. I don't think you can actually go beyond 100% for this one. If I try and make it like 150, it looks exactly the same as 100. So I think this is one of the ones where you can't go more than 100% um, for the value. Okay, so... Yeah, you can get creative there with a, um, with a filter like this one. Now, I want to mention you can also apply multiple filters at the same time. So as an example, let's say I want to apply, uh, let's do a blur. Let's do a blur of uh, one pixel or let's do two pixels actually. You got this blur. You can also use the space character and apply a second filter. So blur and Let's try, uh, let's do grayscale and set this to be 100%. So now I've got a blurred image and also a grayscale applied to it. Now let's animate or apply transitions to these, okay? Let's say transition and we'll say filter at two seconds. So this works like your normal CSS transition property, but we're just saying that it's going to apply to the filter, which just means that it will take two seconds for any filter updates to be applied. So now I've got a 100% grayscale. If I force it to now be 0%, you'll see it takes two seconds for that change to happen. Let's say zero like this, there we go. And you get a nice smooth transition on that change right there. Okay, so keep that in mind. I think this here, again, might come in handy. Um, maybe a website is loading and it's in grayscale and then once it's done loading, you may want to make it fade into uh, to a saturated image um, to make it yeah, a little bit nicer to sort of <laughs> be presented with there. So that is how to apply graphical effects to your images using the CSS filter property. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to Decode. And here is another video.